Hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, and also a very good evening to those of you who are dialing in from the other side of the globe. Welcome to our webinar exclusive. My name is Seipiao, and I work with the Bioenvironmental Science Marketing Team here in Singapore. A term we often hear these days is the new normal. For many, this may mean wearing surgical masks when we are outside and practicing social distancing. For some, the new normal may mean constant anxiety and worrying about financial impact from COVID-19. Needless to say, since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic, many of our lives have changed forever. With Singapore and Malaysia's borders closed, I myself have not seen my family in months, but still I'm one of the lucky ones to still have a job. For business owners, their constant worry is how to keep their businesses afloat and to keep their teams intact without sacrificing anyone's livelihood. The pest control industry too has not been spared, which is why today we are bringing together voices of presidents of pest control associations across Southeast Asia to discuss the impact of COVID-19 to the industry. Today, we have the opinions of Park Boyki from ASFAMI, Indonesia Pest Management Association, Jahisham from MPMA, the Malaysian Pest Management Association, Ms. Jojo from Pest Control Association of the Philippines, Mr. Andrew Chan from the Singapore Pest Management Association and Kun Supernat from the Thai Pest Management Association. We would like to thank each and every one of them for taking the time to do this and we are privileged to facilitate this very important discussion. Before we begin, a bit of housekeeping announcement. This session will schedule for approximately 45 minutes and due to logistical challenges, we have decided to pre-record the discussion. Hence, there will be no live Q&A session at the end. But if you do have any burning questions, we encourage you to email them to us and we'll ensure that they are facilitated accordingly. There is also a chat box on the right of your screen. You can submit your comments throughout the webinar. And if you are using a mobile device, you might want to watch and switch this your mobile device to a landscape mode for better viewing experience. Without further ado, let's begin our session. Situasi COVID-19 sangat mempengaruhi secara pribadi, khususnya kehidupan sosial ekonomi. Sejak diberlakukan pembatasan sosial berskala besar yang sudah hampir dua bulan, secara pribadi saya sudah membatasi pertemuan dengan keluarga, teman, tidak mengunjungi tempat hiburan seperti mal, restoran, dan tidak mengunjungi rumah ibadah yang biasa rutin dilakukan, sehingga sangat berdampak terhadap kehidupan sosial ekonomi saya. How the COVID-19 affect me uh, personally? Uh, the pandemic has triggered movement control order, and uh, we are to work from home uh, with very limited movement. And uh, personally, since 1989, my nature of work is to be with the customer in the field. It's something that I'm not used to and have to be accustomed from this to come. As a business owner, there was some anxiety, of course, especially in the early days. But as it went on, well, I shifted to making more productive use of the work from home setup. Um, I needed to have that outlook and it gave me a chance to review on our operational processes, you know, still be on the work mode, be more forward looking so, and so that we will be able to prepare for the new normal. And I was actually conducting um, meetings with my online meetings with my team. And I think we, we did very productive meetings compared to the, to the live meetings that we used to have in the office. So mental toughness, I think, is very important. And this I, I tried to uh, do. The situation also reminded me of the importance of relationships, of family, of welfare of our people, and of course, our clients as well. As an unknown disease, I felt a lack of control in the face of uncertainty. I'm also concerned how this pandemic will play out globally and whether it can be contained through global effort. 
feel on how it will affect the local economy and also how it will affect the industry, our business, myself, and also the well-being of families and workforce. Lastly, when COVID-19 is over, I must prepare to change uh, the way I live, work, and dealing with my friends and family. Of course, the situation of the COVID-19 uh, has strong impact to the our business and uh, my personal matter. <clears throat> my daily life here will be changed. Uh, for the example, is the social distancing, and uh, we will stay at home, and when we go out, we will uh, wear the mask every time. Situasi pandemi COVID-19 berdampak terhadap perlemahan pertumbuhan ekonomi Indonesia. Hampir semua sektor terkena imbas pandemi COVID-19, khususnya sektor pariwisata, manufaktur, transportasi, otomotif, ekspor import dan lainnya. Dan hal ini berdampak terhadap sektor pest kontrol di Indonesia. Sampai saat ini tercatat 1.500 hotel dan ribuan restoran serta kafe yang ditutup serta penurunan fumigasi untuk tujuan ekspor akibat pandemi COVID-19. Dan hal ini berdampak pada penurunan revenue bisnis sampai dengan pemutusan hubungan kerja. Ditambah lagi, saat ini kita harus melakukan pengeluaran ekstra untuk pembelian penambahan APD, vitamin, dan lainnya yang semua di luar perhitungan kita. The whole issue is that the pest management industry is not being recognized as uh essential services and having said that most of these PCO and the PMPs are not able to service their customers or meeting the obligations in their contract and worse PMP and the PCOs has overheads such as fixed expenses in terms of staff salary and unfortunately under the Labour Act they are not allowed to retrench or have a staff salary pay cut. I think uh, the impact of COVID-19 to some of us, depending on the clients we serve, will be quite substantial. Many economic scenarios predict a decline, at least within the year. For example, there's a projected slump in the hotel or also hospitality industry, including travel. and. Uh, this means they will be spending less. I'm hoping that pest control will not be one of those that they will be, you know, that they will be scrimping on. Just the same, this could mean our markets could shrink and thus reduce some income for, for us. Uh, additionally, the new measures that we now need to take as pest control operators to protect our people with these are expenses that we did not have before, such as the hazmats and also the work, the modified working schedules. We, we def, this will definitely increase our cost of doing business and therefore impact our bottom line business targets. So I guess this means we need to really tighten our belts. Unlike many other countries, Singapore didn't implement a complete lockdown measures during COVID-19. Instead, a host of restrictive measures were introduced in phrases to prevent transmission, which including strict travel restriction, stay home notice, social distancing, famous wearing, active case tracing and testing, and supplemented with law enforcement and it allows essential service to continue to soften the impact on the economy and inconvenient cost to the general population. Pest management is an essential service during COVID-19. The business activities continue although the manpower on site were limited due to circuit breaker measures imposed by the government. The first thing that is obvious is uh, access to the customer service. That has a change to the cancelling or the requesting to the postpone the service before making it unable to provide service as usual, which has a huge impact to the provider service and missing a revenue.
Tantangan umum di antara komunitas PCO adalah tingkat kesadaran sebagian besar customer yang masih sangat rendah tentang pentingnya pest control. Sehingga mereka begitu mudah stop service selama pandemi. Di samping itu, tantangan terbesarnya juga adalah bagaimana di situasi yang sulit ini para teman-teman PCO di Indonesia dapat bertahan hidup dan melayani servis pekerjaan dengan memperhatikan keamanan, keselamatan, dan kesehatan. The most challenging is uh, not having the right information, uh, more on guessing games, uh, something like are we considered ourselves as uh, essential service? And basically, when we ask the authority, such as Department of Agriculture and Ministry of Health, they are not able to provide us answers. Uh, up to last week, uh, meaning a month and a half ago, the most common challenge was mobility. Um, of course, our service teams cannot freely go from city to city anymore due to the checkpoints. And there were times that our technicians are just not showing up, uh, obviously heeding the call of the government to stay home. So this means, of course, that financially it hurts. We don't have, we're not able to do our services. At the same time, we're a bit worried that the pest conditions in our clients' uh, uh, establishments could get uh, bad. <laughs> uh, but some of our pet, of uh, some of my pests control friends also have uh, managed uh, 30% operations while the others have totally suspended their operations for the period. Ensuring proper protection of our workforce during servicing. Unable to provide services due to manpower limits imposed during circuit breaker period. Implementing social distancing among the workforce both at office and on site. Inability to make client servicing requests due to shortage of manpower and tight deployment schedule. Worried about possible infection among the workforce due to regular client contacts. Okay, challenges for PCO in this situation uh, is to adjust to what will follow after the COVID situation is over. Whether the service needs to be adjusted in accordance with consumer who may be concerned about the infection or the contamination, uh, social distancing and standard of service may be changed. Customer to change to new normal lifestyle. Ya, hal ini cukup mengujudkan untuk kita semua, terutama reaksi spontan customer yang melakukan stop service setelah pengumuman pembatasan sosial berskala besar dilakukan. When the Prime Minister announced MCO on the 16 March 2020, uh, apparently everyone of us Malaysian caught off guard. And uh, immediately on March 18, 2020, the uh, MPMA issued advisory notes via email to all the members addressing two critical uh, agendas. Number one is that if they were to carry on with the services, they need to request from their customers burden of proof. That means the customer has to issue them service requests. Number two that we address is in terms of staff salary and we have advised them to negotiate uh, and come up with a agreement in writing with the staff whether they are agreed to the pay card or even unpaid leave. Yes, in as far as the extent and duration. In the Philippines and particularly in Luzon, it was announced on a Friday so we had a weekend to prepare. Um, we had we were able to prepare the documentation that our people will need to have with them, as well as some uh, PPE items uh, that they need to have with it with them. However, as the quarantine has uh, been extended twice as of this recording, I guess we have adapted to the situation. 
uh, me in particular while being abreast of current events and uh, we need to be forward looking so uh, for this week all our meetings with my team is to prepare for uh, the lifting of the lockdown and how to um, catch up with the client schedules that have piled up. The government has kept the general population fully aware of the disease situation in the country and globally. There has been no surprises to us and all in general as the restriction measures were introduced in phrases. Despite fear and worry, we are prepared to provide full support to help the government in overcoming this COVID-19 crisis. Okay, when the government announced the curfew, the PCO the, has to adapt to the, this situation. It's a, for example, to adjust for the service plan to finish before the curfew. <clears throat> uh, for the TPMA, uh, send the message to all members uh, to concern about the safety, uh, for example, it's a safety protection and the COVID situation to our media channel. This is a uh, really important to the our member. Ya, yeah, alhamdulillah sampai saat ini jasa penerima sudah dianggap pelayanan penting di Indonesia, khususnya di sektor private yang biasa disebut dengan B2B. Hal ini terkait regulasi, standarisasi, dan hygiene sanitasi. Hampir 90% sektor swasta di Indonesia sudah menggunakan jasa penerimaan hama, seperti industri perhotelan, rumah sakit, apartemen, gedung perkantoran, industri makanan minuman, dan lainnya. Memang untuk B2G dan B2C ini masih minim, dan masih perlu dioptimalkan dan digalakan untuk pasar ke depannya. Under the Disease Control Act 1988, essential services has been clearly defined uh, and it does not include pest control services. Obviously, that we think that we are ancillary services to the essential services, especially utilities company, the telecommunication industry and so forth. However, the MPMA has taken and took the liberty to write to the MOH as well as the Department of Agriculture that we request to be included as part of uh, essential services and we have email, emailed the letters on the 25th uh, March. Yes. Pest control was uh, clarified as part of the essential services that's allowed to work during the quarantine by the Department of Trade over, but over a week ago. But prior to that, um, while the others weren't able to do regular pest control, we have uh, colleagues who were able to do disinfection services, which um, strengthens our role in such pandemics and our ability to help curb the spread of like COVID-19. So moving forward, I think it would be very uh, good if the industry as a whole could advocate our importance in such uh, situations, especially when it involves um, the spread of diseases or pathogens that can also be transmitted by pests. The pest management sector has been in forefront working closely with NEA in carrying out critical vector control measures to prevent dengue transmission. With the traditional dengue peak season coming up from May to September, NEA has urged the association member to continue in sustained effort in carrying out intensive vector control measures at the identified dengue hotspot with special attention given to construction site. The industry also heavily involved in providing disinfectant service during the COVID-19 and help to prevent the transmission. Although we are not considered as the essential service in Thailand, but it is still important for us to promote and line up the standard uh, of our service, of our technician to fight COVID-19.
Ya, sebagian PCO sudah melayakan jasa sanitasi, namun layanan ini tidak diatur khusus dalam aturan dan dapat dilakukan oleh PCO. Yes, almost all PCO or PMPs in Malaysia has uh, are doing disinfecting services as part of their uh, service niche because they have the uh, skills as well as the equipment to do it efficiently. Currently, there's no regulations on disinfecting services in Malaysia, but we have submitted to the MOH uh, a proposed SOP for disinfecting in the private as well as commercial properties and we are still waiting uh, results from the MOH. Those uh, PMPs or PCO that has already obtained PCO license under the 2004 rules and regulation should be able to do this uh, disinfecting services because the knowledge, skill as well as the equipment that they currently have now should be able for them to render the service effectively. But if you refer to sanitation or cleaning services, I believe there's some of us, uh, only a handful I guess, of pest control operators already doing that. Um, but us in particular, we, ha we are not doing cleaning services, but we've had disinfection service as part of our service offerings in the past. Um, yeah, and, and since uh, it will appear that pest control operators will be doing this quite regularly, uh, brought about by the emergence of uh, diseases like COVID-19, it would be good if the pest control operators will be able to perform this properly using the correct disinfectants that's duly registered with the FDA and some regulation at the very least to ensure that the, pros the procedures are correct, the choice of products according to the situations that's being addressed will be according to standards and that it is one that will deliver the results that is necessary. Many PCOs are providing this infection during COVID-19. This infection service has never been our core business. It has grown healthy because of the surge in demand as a result of COVID-19. The current pandemic may prompt the industry to re-examine this infection service as possible new service. Proper training must be conducted and an industry standard is set to ensure this infection service is carried out properly before it is recommended to the industry. Pest control company in Thailand can perform a sanitization service as well, but must comply the our regulation of our government. PCO can be prepared the procedure training, PPE kits, and right equipment, including the chemical to meet the standard for the benefit and maximum safety. COVID-19 akan bersama kita untuk waktu yang belum bisa ditentukan. Hidup manusia harus terus berlanjut, dan itu sudah terbukti beribu tahun, meskipun berulang kali menghadapi pandemi. Strategi ekonomi dan kesehatan keluar COVID-19 yang dicanangkan oleh Kadin Indonesia bersama 150 asosiasi anggota luar biasa Kadin yang merupakan strategi optimal dengan membuka aktivitas ekonomi dengan batas kesehatan yang bisa ditolerir atau necessary condition akan menjadi opsi untuk penyelamatan ekonomi di tengah pandemi corona. Selain itu, industri PCO harus melakukan perubahan dalam cara bekerja, cara berbisnis, meningkatkan keahlian karyawan, melakukan pemetaan sektor bisnis yang akan dijadikan sasaran, dan melakukan penyesuaian serta kerjasama dengan sektor tersebut. I think the relationship between the government agencies and the MPMA is very strong in a way that right after the PM announced MCO to be effective from March 16, we received a letter from MOH that we are allowed to carry on with our services and that basically helps the PCO to move around. 
when everyone were asked to work from home, uh, literally everyone has no knowledge how to deal with it, how to communicate effectively with staff and the customers. And now, I think one critical skill that they have undertaken is the use of video conferencing as, as a part of the communication. Since we need to embrace new norms, we need to embrace new technologies and we need to think of how to service our customer as well as how to do fast monitoring remotely using innovative technologies. Definitely, a strong relationship uh, between the industry associations and the government is important. Recognition of the pest control industry, since we do manage pests, that are vectors of disease pathogens like viruses and bacteria. We do this already. And uh, it's important that we are able to really ensure that the procedures we do are also in accordance with the government uh, objectives. So I think a relationship, a strong relationship is crucial. Uh, the tools and innovations uh, that I think can be useful uh, for our industry to prepare for in pandemics such as this one should include number one availability and or a greater variety of the application equipments that's available to us particularly uh, for disinfection especially here in the philippines second would be training we need training as an industry on proper disinfection how to understand disinfectants, which one to use where, so that we deliver uh, the effectivity that is required. And third, of course, would be, well, everybody has transported itself to the digital age. And while the lockdown should be lifted at some point, we will be restricting already, I guess, our mass gatherings. And so uh, continuation of webinars and online trainings will be very uh, useful. I think that adapting a different or new business model will depend on the organizational ability and target market of the pest control company. But personally, I see the need to reinvent or at least modify some operational procedures so that we can cope with the new normal. Of course, we have to understand that our business is one that brings us to uh, inside people's homes, factories, and offices. And this practice surely exposes us and our clients to various health risks. So if we can address and somehow, aside from the PPEs that we will now need to wear, if there are additional measures that we can think of or devise, will be very welcome. SPMA has a long established working relationship with the National Environment Agency. With the industry now integrated with the Environmental Service Industry Transformation Map or the ESITM, NEA is also represented in our monthly council meeting to provide guidance and input on vector control issue at national level. The pest management landscape is already changing with more and more companies progressing into digital pest management to improve their day-to-day -day operations with the help of innovative equipment to manage pests. We foresee more changes will to happen when 5G technology matured and introduced with more monitoring device come on to the market which will assist to improve pest management efficiency and improve productivity. New generation and greener insecticides, example biocide and baiting system using insect growth regulator will also further enhance pest treatment. The new business model may evolve in a not very long future where more innovative monitoring equipment and devices are used to keep surveillance 
on pest activities. Collaboration between uh, association and authority is very important. When this happens, we should have exchange of experience to find the best solution in operation to get the most out. Saat ini asosiasi sudah mengeluarkan surat himbauan terkait pencegahan penularan wabah virus corona bagi anggota SPAMI di seluruh Indonesia dan dampak ekonomi yang mungkin akan ditimbulkan. Kita sudah sebarkan ke semuanya, harapannya mudah-mudahan semua anggota dapat menjalankan ini. Dan juga kita juga sudah mengeluarkan surat edaran terkait rencana aksi SPAMI lawan COVID-19 dengan melakukan penyemprotan rumah ibadah serentak satu anggota SPAMI sangat tuh rumah ibadah. Dan ini juga sudah dilakukan. E, Mudah-mudahan apa yang sudah kita lakukan selama ini dapat membantu pemerintah ya dalam memutus COVID-19 di Indonesia. At this point of time, the MCO has been extended until June the 9th. And basically, during this extension time, the MPMA will definitely update its member any uh, news from the government agencies through their emails and whatsapps and basically we would like to also collaborate with other stakeholders such as chemical manufacturers in terms of continuous training through possibly webinar and we are hoping that uh, this thing shall pass very soon and I would like to take this opportunity to say stay safe, stay away from COVID-19. Last weekend, some members of the Pest Control Association of the Philippines met online via Zoom. It was an informal meeting and it's mainly to um, let each other know that we are here for each other. But it was also a very productive meeting. We were able to generate a lot of ideas that will help us post lockdown we were able to um, member participants shared best practices that our members can also follow especially in preparation for this new normal and we were able to listen to a lot of uh, valid business uh, and operational issues that we will definitely bring up to our uh, board so I think um, interactions such as this uh, should, be, should be very helpful. So even though we are not able to go out on the streets and, and meet face to face, shouldn't stop us from uh, listening to each other and comforting or helping each other out. So for me, um, this is one thing that I will recommend that our association should continue to do. SPME maintain close contact and dialogue with the NEA and other government agencies and assisting members in manpower appeal and coordinating the critical vector control effort during COVID-19. SPME is represented in the NEA-led Interagency Dengue Task Force Committee and providing on-site input in national dengue control and prevention program. Since every PCO has to send a technician to provide service every month, it is important for us to bring the safety net of technician up to the highest level to make sure that we help our society to minimize the risk of the virus and still provide the effective service at the same time. Lastly, we need to give back to our society. We can help by donate to hospital and supporting our doctor by stay at home.
All right. Thank you once again to Pak Boyki, Mr. Hisham, Ms. Jojo, Mr. Andrew Chan, and Kun Supanat for taking time out of the busy schedules to share their perspective with us. Thanks also to the audience for submitting your questions. Please do not hesitate to send them to us, and we will ensure that they are facilitated properly. Next, I would like to bring on stage our Head of Marketing in Asia Pacific, Mr. Dave Ross. Hi there, so, yeah. Good morning, Dave. Hi. Hey, hey. So, um, common theme among the panelists in the interview so far, it's about changing the way we do business moving forward. Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, and hello to everyone listening, of course. Yeah, well, we heard we heard a variety of opinions, but we also heard a lot of very common themes. Things are definitely, they have changed. Things will continue to change in the years to come. And, um, you know, we can really only speculate about um, the impacts of it all. But I, I think that there are, well, there's one thing that's that's definitely going to remain true, and that is that, Tests will always uh, be there. Uh, they'll be creating pressure and they'll need to be managed. So, um, you know, aside from all the disruption and chaos of the moment, we, we can be confident that the industry will still um, play a vital role in years to come. I, I think what's really interesting to consider is, is how different industries will regard pest control, pest management. Um, I, I, we're seeing a lot of industries facing extreme financial um, troubles at the moment. And as a result, I think we'll probably see a lot of industry consolidation. You have a look at airlines, you have a look at uh, hotels, hospitality, restaurants. I would expect to see consolidation within those industries. And, and where we see that, where we see uh, chain organisations or organisations under one management, we see often a call for for protocols and consistency in the way we manage pest issues across borders. So, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen. But we also heard from, mm. from the association presidents that a lot of pest managers are being asked about hygiene and sanitation. And I'm sure there'll be a continued focus on both. Uh, and we know that pest management and sanitation are, are inexorably linked. So, I hope that that will open up opportunities for pest managers to expand upon the work that they currently do. So, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic, um, despite all the, the hardship and, and hurdles that exist at the moment, that pest management with its role in, in managing disease vectors should be better appreciated after a crisis like this. Yep, I agree. Um, the other one that stood out was about shortage of manpower um, and how businesses could continue with servicing maintenance, and, but at the same time, keeping the technicians safe. There must be technology out there that could help with this kind of um, challenges. Yeah, and there is. I mean, th this technology has been, uh, I mean, Bayer and other companies have been involved in the development mm -hmm. of um, monitoring systems. And, and we did hear um, during the interviews that there's an expectation that, that those monitoring systems will play an increasingly useful role as we try to, to minimise human interventions and, and manage with these social distancing laws and rules that will come into effect. Um, but even beyond that, I, I don't think um, it'll just be technology that changes. I, I think that technology will be a positive thing if we can, if we can manage new expectations about human intervention in programs. Um, and we can effectively monitor for pests. I, I don't, it is a little disruptive, but I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing because it means that pest control technicians can spend more time addressing the root causes of problems and, and doing some diagnostic work as opposed to checking of traps. So I think it might add um, a bit more sophistication to the perceptions that people have uh, of pest management. But I think, I think one thing that'll really be an interesting change is is the way people respond um, after this economic shock. You know, we, we saw a lot of young people in recent years emphasizing that they wanted flexibility in their in their careers and their working um, their working situations. And we saw that fueling the gig economy. And and this economic shock, I'm sure, is going to make a lot of people rethink their priorities. I think we'll probably see people looking for greater job security and stability. And I think that's a real opportunity for pest management. You know, the pests are always going to be there. 
or always going to play a really vital role, uh, it would be great as an industry to, to have a think about how we can um, offer that stability and security and career progression and attract people who are looking for those qualities. Mm. Yeah. On, on a personal level, one thing that stood out to me in the interview is that the pest management professionals are often the overlooked frontliners, especially from the vector control point of view. The continuous effort to keep the battle going against dengue, especially in this region, is, is extremely crucial and underappreciated, in, in my opinion. So, so thanks, yeah. Dave. Um, just for the information of the audience, Dave will also be the host of our next bio webinar, which is um, the preventive pest management in food safety. A very relevant topic, especially in these times. But before we let Dave go, I'd just like to ask Dave one last question. I, how should manufacturers like Bayer partner with the industry to overcome COVID-19 together? Yeah, uh, and, and yeah, thanks for the plug for the next uh, webinar. Uh, but it, I think this this ties in nicely. There are a lot of ways that we can work together. Um, but but for us, the opportunity that we have now, just just with this type of technology, having a webinar and being able to be closer uh, connected to the global community of PCOs, I think provides an opportunity for us to better understand your needs. And uh, and that's really important for a company like Bayer with the investments that we make in R and D. Um, that R&D investment is so much better steered when we have a, a solid understanding direct from the PCO and direct from the industries they serve of, of what they need. So I'm, I'm positive about that. Um, the, the webinar that we're going to run next week is, is, is an example. It's the detail behind it is that uh, we ran a, a survey in partnership with BRC Global Standards. And in that survey, we wanted to understand um, from the perspective of the pest manager and the food safety manager, what goes into a really effective working partnership. So we used um, research to go out to 200 PCOs and 200 food safety managers in the US and Europe and ask them, you know, in a, in a good, effective working relationship, what happens and, and where you get frustrated, what's happening there and how can we help to maybe um, shine some light on those points of success or points of frustration so that we can work to avoid them in future. So we'll have that session next week. Uh, I'll, I'll have uh, a couple of um, my colleagues who are experienced PCOs in the UK and the US attending, I hope. And, uh, and it'll be an example of how we can work to understand your needs and that'll help to channel our product development, our service development, and our understanding of your challenges. So we can do that. Um, in a similar vein, another bit of a plug, I think I'd like, we, we've set up a, a questionnaire at the end of this session, which I'd like to invite the attendees to, uh, to complete as well. Um, if you can, if you're happy to take the time to do it, I think we have a great opportunity, not just to hear from the association heads, but to hear from you about how your, the, about how the impact of, of this COVID-19 crisis has been felt by you. And, you know, very often it's difficult for individual pest management firms to share their experiences. Um, but we, we have the opportunity as a multinational global company to, to facilitate that and to provide an anonymous summary of how a whole industry is feeling. So, yeah, I mean, if we'll put up the link to that questionnaire and, and if you can spare the time and you'd be interested to see how your peers are feeling, then, then please complete it. I think it would be valuable. And, and I'd really like to do more of that. I'd love for us to be able to, to share more insights about effective work practices and just about your challenges too. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Um, me, before Thank we you. beam you off, you want to say goodbye to the audience? <laughs> I would. Thank you very much for attending. Um, difficult times. I know, and uh, and and certainly I, I sympathise with you for the for the challenges that you have at the moment. I I am, as I mentioned before, optimistic because I know that we play such a vital role in pest management um, in protecting the population from disease. But I don't I don't always think it's as appreciated as it could be. So the optimist in me says, well, when we when we have this acute focus on on health and we faced a crisis maybe we'll think a little more broadly about, about those that 
maintain our health day to day and, and pest managers are those people. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Thanks, Dave. And then that brings us to the end of our webinar today. I would like to end today's session with a message of hope. Remember this, oftentimes the brightest rainbows follow the darkest rainstorms. Nelson Mandela once said, the greatest glory in living lies not in never failing, but in rising every time we fall. I believe in the resilience of mankind and in each and every one of us. So have hope and we will get through this together. Until we meet again, thank you, stay safe and goodbye.